So. But yeah, really looking forward to talk about Git. Uh, yeah. It will be second day where we do Git. We we will be still most of it will be on our computer. But today we will take the first excursion outside where we move our repository from from the computer to GitHub. It will still be a day where we focus on all the tools that are really useful, even if you work on your own. And then tomorrow we will take it a step further and then collaborate. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So we've got some questions in the notes here. Well, we've got the icebreaker questions for you. And if you have any follow-up questions from yesterday, we can discuss that now. Yeah, and please add them. We also have the first 10 minutes of the day reserved as for as a recap. And the more questions we get, uh, the more improv it will be, really the better the workshop. Yeah. Maybe we can talk about tags closer to start time mm -hmm. in case people have questions there. Um, the icebreaker question is, how are you watching by yourself or in a group or whatever? Um, we're curious how many people are watching in big groups here uh, to give us some better stats of how stuff goes. Mm -hmm. um, and for the mascot of the workshop, so I had the idea to make some sort of well, like take the code refinery logo and mash it up with some sort of animal or plant or something that would symbolize us that are taking the workshop this month right now. And if there's any ideas, please write them or vote for existing ideas. I like the gopher idea from the, uh, the git gopher thing. And then what's been your most collaborative project so far? So should we already discuss that? Maybe we can wait a couple minutes to s discuss when more people here. And I'm getting some feedback here that maybe my microphone isn't so great again. So I switched now, I unmuted. I'm wondering whether there is any background noise from me here through the microphone. I will check my gain. I mean, I hear some of the room echo stuff, but I think it's probably similar to yesterday. Yeah, that is a bit hard to avoid. Um, yeah, working on it. So for week two, I will find a better solution. Yeah. Does anyone have headset recommendations? So I guess something that reasonable quality, comfortable to wear for a long time and well wired are custom dongle so it has a short latency time So I'm only unmuting myself again just to check whether this is something I really need to do something about. Because if the audio is bad, it's bad. So we should fix that. Oh. Okay, so it wasn't me. So we will start in a little bit less than five minutes. It would be great if you can add some, also some questions about yesterday. We know that, especially towards the end, it went a bit fast, a bit too fast. So the more questions we get, the better will be the experience for everybody, but also the more questions, it slows us down a bit, which is a good thing. So today we plan to, to use the notes more often. Yes. So what about tags? 
So what would you have said yesterday? Yeah, some of you forgot to mention them. So I, I added the link. It's, it's very similar to branches. It is also, the, we can imagine a tag like a sticky note next to a commit. So technically it's very similar to a branch. But the difference is that when we work with branches and we add new commits to the branch, this branch label is moving with the commits. In contrast, the tags don't move. So they are like, they are like road markers, milestones. You can attach them to a certain commit and then it stays there. And what is, why are they useful? They are useful to, if you want to mark certain commits in a human readable way, for instance, with a certain version. So like this is the version 1.0. I can create a tag and it's easier to communicate 1.0 than it is for me to tell you a 40 character identifier. Yeah, I mean, that's where I've always seen tags used for like, okay, I'm releasing version 1, so I tag this 1.0. I'm releasing yeah. version 1.1 of that. Where the tag would never move, you'd always release a new version because that's just what it is. Well, or like say you're submitting a paper or something, you have it in Git and you tag, okay, submitted on this day. And that's just it. So you can't change the submission, but you can make a new submission version. Let's see. Um, what about, oh, we've got a new question. It's a great question. So the question is, so... Uh, all these changes that we did, the commits, the branches, the merges, everything was local. It was only on our computer. It was, maybe you remember that we had, we had this .git hidden directory in our project folder and everything is in there. So everything that we created went in there. Um, so, so far everything was local. Today we will have a preview, we will, we will see how can we share what we created locally and then through GitHub and similar services. Tomorrow we will study, that, uh, study this in depth. So tomorrow we will really understand how that works. So yes, we will be able to, even if we start locally in the terminal, we will today learn how to move that over to, to the web and then from there on one can collaborate through the web. Yeah, I guess day one was basically starting off slow and making sure everyone had the basics. But if that was slow, don't worry, because we get to the cool stuff soon. So what's been your biggest collaborative project so far? Oh, uh, Radovan. Yeah, so for me, it was the project I was working on during PhD and postdoc. So that is a quantum chemistry code. Um, probably 20 to 50 people, 20 ish people very active, um, almost weekly, weekly changes. And it's a project that exists since over 20 years. So okay. big project, a lot of Git history, people collaborating, and it used Git. And it uses Git. Okay. In fact, moved to Git in maybe 2010, 2011. So before that, used different tools. I see. Okay. Yeah, when during my PhD and postdoc, I didn't really have anything that big. Maybe in the later time, if it's something we're contributing to, but I'm not a core part of some of the Jupyter things like Jupyter Hub I've contributed to are pretty big, but that's definitely not something that I'm mainly doing. But sort of shows the point. So what we'll learn yesterday, or what we will learn tomorrow, is how anyone can use Git to contribute a really small bit to something. To um, let's see. 
can use Git and pull requests to contribute to something. So there's a big project like Jupyter Hub. It's not just um, a few people doing it, but a few people managing it and many people contributing their little bits they have. But I've noticed it's time to get started.